Aloha everybody and welcome to Weekly Edit. Oh, we're having a crazy week here and I only have a few minutes today, but I wanted to go over some additional thoughts I've had about camera profiling over the last couple of weeks. We've gone over base curves and we've gone over using the CLUT, the color lookup table module to match the um, in-camera JPEG. And I wanted to point out a couple of things. Uh, developing an ICC profile for your camera is not the same thing as matching the in-camera JPEG. And the last episode I did on using the color lookup table to match the in-camera JPEG is different. That matches your in-camera JPEG. So if you want to color profile your camera with an ICC profile, that's a different story. And we can look at that in a future issue. All right. Um, some of the things I wanted to go over have to do with the order of the pixel pipe in Darktable. And the way that you determine the pixel pipe is by clicking on one of these groups a second time. Okay, so when you select the group, it goes to that group. But when you click on the same group a second time, it gives you a longer list, okay? And I've removed most of the modules so that I could show you easier today what we're gonna talk about. And the way you add and remove modules is to open this more modules um, dialog box down here. And when you click on a module, it shows up in your list. And when you click on it a second time, it shows up under these favorited ones. And when you click on it a third time, it goes away. So I took all of them out except for the very few that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so let's go back to the basic group here. Click twice so that we have a full list. And here's our pixel pipe from start to finish. Starts with the raw black white point, which we're not supposed to touch. Okay, and look at this. The very next thing is white balance. Now white balance is a number that your camera embeds in the EAXIF data and has no bearing at all on your raw data itself, okay? All that happens is your camera says in the EAXIF data, here's what I think the white point should be. So there's these presets and the two I use the most are the camera and the spot. Um, you probably want to set this up so it's right before you do anything else because it's so early in the process. It affects chromatic aberration calculations, it affects demosaicing, it affects tone mapping, it affects everything all the way up the list, okay? So white balance first, really important. So if you don't have your white balance right, camera profiling for your base curves are gonna be off too, okay? So, let's look at what else I wanna talk about here, and that is tone mapping. Look where tone mapping is. Tone mapping is below base curve, okay? So, what I'm doing with tone mapping a lot is I'm bringing out shadows by combining tone mapping with a parametric mask, and I have a setting that I use a lot. I set my spatial extent down to around 6%, and bring my contrast down a bit too. And then I only apply this to the very darkest parts of the image. Like this. Okay. And in doing that, I have a consistent way I'm using tone mapping. I need to rebuild my base curves with tone mapping enabled and without tone mapping enabled. And the reason is, these base curve calculations are going to be different based on whether or not there's tone mapping. So I'm going to have a set of camera profiles that are with tone mapping, and those would be things with deep shadows, and then I'll have a set where I'm not going to use tone mapping. And I will label them such. I won't be able to automatically apply them because there's not a way in the um, settings here, the presets, to uh, determine whether or not you've tone mapped. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is graduated density. Look at that, it happens before the base curve. If you're going to make tonal adjustments because of lightness on one side of the image versus another, whether it's coming from the top or from the side, make your graduated density adjustments before you adjust your base curve. All right, here's another thing, base curve. Now this is huge. I should have done a whole episode just on this. And the deal is this. 
let's close this and I will open dark table from the tree. Okay. In the tree you'll find that the base curve has a fusion setting and an exposure shift. Okay, but if I compile Darktable from source code, this base curve has a completely different look. Under exposure, exposure, there's now exposure shift and exposure bias. And you can think of this almost as highlights and shadows, except in using instead of using a blend radius of like 100 pixels, this is like an intelligent um, highlight and shadow type effect, okay? For instance, I shot this at 100 ISO on a 7R. So we'll go to 7R, 100 ISO, and this is the base curve I built. Now if I turn on this fusion for, fusion for three exposures, I can take my exposure shift, which is like my shadows, and if I increase it or decrease it, you can see that it has an immediate effect. Same thing with the high end. Oh man, this has changed my life. Also, look at this. Now they've added a blending operator to the base curve. So, you can use drawn masks and parametric masks with the base curve. Additionally, you can have duplicate instances. So, you can adjust the base curve, including the exposure fusion, differently for the bottom or the top or the darker or the lighter or based on color channels incredible amount of enhanced functionality. All right, I strongly suggest that if you want to use this functionality, you download the source code at darktable.org and compile it yourself so that you get this enhanced functionality. All right, everybody, I know it's a real short episode, but I thought those were important topics. The last thing I wanted to talk about was noise, and there has been requests for looking at noise and camera profiling, and I want to point out that the noise changes considerably based on how much you exaggerate contrast in certain tonal ranges, okay? Not just luminance contrast, but also color contrast. So it's kind of impossible to set up uh, denoising only based on ISO and camera profile because under some circumstances the noise will show up and in other ones it won't. If you don't see much noise start exaggerating the contrast and you'll start seeing noise where you didn't think it was. You may have to be creative about your approaches based on your particular situation and you may have to use different noise reduction strategies in different areas of the image also. It all depends on what you're going to do with the image. If I'm really bringing up my shadows and I'm using tone mapping and I'm using the base curve fusion, um, I am really going to exaggerate the noise in the shadows and I may have to use a different schema for the shadows than for the rest of the image so I don't deteriorate the details in the rest of the image. That's it, everybody. I will be here next week and hopefully do a longer episode. Have a great week. I'll see you later. Bye.